Towards the end of the Clone War, the Jedi were growing more and more suspicious of Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, but the Sith Lord continued to remain one step ahead of them. For a number of years, he had formed a bond with Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker and drawing him to the dark side with the offer to save his wife Padma Amidala of Naboo, the conflict in the former slave would tear the Jedi Order apart. Elsewhere in the galaxy, the Jedi were continuing with their missions to the Republic, but for one former Jedi on Mandalore, the objective was different. Ahsoka Tano had been wandering the streets of Coruscant before being recruited by Bo-Katan of the Night Owls to take down the Zabrak Maul and help her gain control of Mandalore. In their siege of the planet, the former Jedi Padawan encounters Maul in the confines of the palace throne room, and there the renegade Sith alerts Ahsoka to the plans of Palpatine with Anakin. The Togruta refused the offer to join Maul and to help defeat Sidious, believing that the Zabrak had an ulterior and more deceptive motive. After defeating him in the rooftops of Sundari, Maul is placed in the security of a Mandalorian cage and the former Jedi with Clone Commander Rex entered into the mobile communications unit to speak to the Jedi Council. Once more the Council and in particular Mace Windu wanted to arrest the Supreme Chancellor after the death of General Grievous, but they are still clueless as to the plans of Palpatine concerning Anakin. Ahsoka is unable to inform the Jedi of everything they needed due to Mace Windu denying her information concerning the Chancellor. And as they return to Coruscant, Ahsoka senses a seismic shift in the Force before Order 66 commenced. But what if Ahsoka sensed Anakin's fall to the dark side? Could she have saved him before he was consumed by the temptations of the Sith? Or would she have perished like so many other Jedi? As you're going to find out, Ahsoka's visions could have changed the outcome of the end of the war. Aboard the bridge of the Venator class Star Destroyer named the Tribunal, Commander Rex offered for Ahsoka to join his briefing, but the Jedi decided that she would go to check if Maul was still in his cage. The former Jedi could hear rattlings and screams from the former Sith, and dismissing the clones guarding him, she freed him from his shackles. Maul revealed the visions he had seen of the events in Palpatine's office, and now Ahsoka could sense them too, so they ran to the briefing room just as the clones began to gather. Dismissing all of the 332nd Company, Maul threatened any that did not comply, as Ahsoka changed the line of communication to the Jedi Temple. Shaq T was the most senior member of the Jedi Order in the Temple, and Ahsoka desperately ordered her to go to the Chancellor's office and stop Palpatine and Anakin. The Council member ran to the Republic Executive Building and used a civilian speeder to get her to the level of the office, before leaping through the window that had already been broken by Mace Windu. Before Anakin could choose the dark side, Master T pushed Anakin back into the walls of the office, but this allowed Palpatine to escape into the streets of Coruscant. As Anakin got to his feet, he ignited his lightsaber and charged to the Jedi Masters, furious that his road to saving Padme had been completely blocked. The council members take advantage of their mastery of lightsaber combat and Anakin's lack of control in his new dark side powers to defeat him, as they then took him to one of the remaining carbonite freezing chambers in the Jedi Temple. Running back to the missions room, they find Ahsoka waiting to hear the fate of her master, but in the chaos aboard her ship, Maul had taken a Y-Wing bomber from the hangover destroyer to escape to the surface of Coruscant. Windu responds to the information given by Ahsoka to divide the clone battalions into small groups to find Maul which they hoped would also reveal the location of the Chancellor. Palpatine, however, was hidden in plain sight just as he had been throughout the war, and standing in the centre of the Galactic Senate's main arena, he condemned the Jedi to be traitors of the Republic. The Senators around him have mixed responses until they are terrified by the presence of Maul emerging from one of the exits, and they all ran to safety. Palpatine narrowed his eyes at the sight of his old apprentice and leaping towards him, Maul retreated back to the streets of Coruscant, where he knew the clones and the Jedi would be waiting. Palpatine could sense the trap being laid by the Zabrak, and he needed Anakin by his side, so as the Chancellor blended himself amongst the crowd of Senators, he took the chance to run for his personal speeder, where Masamita stood by. Palpatine carefully looked around the skyline of Coruscant, where he sensed his future apprentice at the temple, and ordered the pilot to take him there, as Maul looked confusingly around the Senate building. Just above him, Ahsoka had finally arrived on the planet, and alongside members of the 332nd Company, they were horrified to discover that Anakin was not being guarded by any Jedi Masters, and ran into the boundaries of the temple to find him. 
the former Padawan finally saw a master encased in carbonite and releasing him from his constraints. His eyes opened and they were a sickly yellow. Demanding to know the condition of Padme, Ahsoka attempted to drag him back to her apartment, but before they leave the temple, they are interrupted by the voice of Palpatine. That is it for part 1 of What If Ahsoka Sends Stanikin to Fall. If you'd like to see a part 2 soon, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel What If Films. And as always, leave a comment on what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.